Guess what time it is. That's right, it's time to wake up with watches. Thank you for joining me. If you're watching this first run, remember, link in the description, win that Panerai Luminor, the PAM 523. Also recall that our new standard practice is prices in the description. So if you see it here, it's for sale and it's priced. Give a call or a text to Brian Govberg, or George Mayer at our company to get started. Let's jump straight into a watch that's special to me because I was sort of present for its rebirth. Now, the first of the 39mm Explorers, the 214270s, arrived in 2010, but there was a subtle change to the dial for 2016, whereby it was now fully luminescent, including the tri-arabics at 9, 6, and 3. 39mm, nice and slender, elemental with the Explorer dial, and a lovely black gloss base with white gold indices, numerals, and Mercedes hands. This is a legendary piece, of course, inspired by the exploits of... Edmund Tillery and Tenzing Norgay in the Himalayas, the watch nevertheless remains a very practical and eminently versatile Rolex option. I'm going to take off my Zin Easy M1.1. You guys know this watch well, so I need not recap. I'm predictable as wrist chats go. This is a timepiece that is beefier than a 36, but it's not quite as bulky as the 40s to 42s. It's a handsome and minimalist watch, and as you can see, on the wrist, it cuts a striking figure without actually being terribly large. So this is a watch that has a lot of punch for its 39 millimeters, and while we often discuss the GMT, the Sub, and the Daytona as core collection Rolex, you would have to be a fool to omit models like the Explorers and the Datejust, because these truly are the heart and soul of Rolex. And in terms of discretion, two of the lowest profile Rolex watches you could buy, a Datejust or an Explorer in steel, but at 39, it's not a petite watch. My wrist is 16 centimeters circumference and as you can see it sits nice and low not being one of the rotating bezel Rolex sports watches it's easily cuffable under even the tightest of dress sleeves now pop this one open and you can see internally this is not an entry-level model. It features Rolex's easy link 5 millimeter adjustment system and it doesn't feature an embossed crown, rather it features a raised crown, so again, not an entry-level model. It has the easy link and the raised crown. It even has the pure sports-style double-locking clasp, not the single lock that you would, for example, find on something like an Oyster Perpetual. So you have that first vertical locking trigger, and then you have the clamshell system. So this is a formidable watch with a surprising amount of top-end Rolex content. And of course, one of my favorite features, the satin-finished center links of the Oyster bracelet. Now, I mentioned the date just, and I think it's important that we take a look at one, but then again, this is the cure for the common Datejust. It's a ubiquitous model, so let's look at an individualist's version of a Datejust. How about radially arrayed applique Arabic numerals? How about applique rose gold indices outboard of those numerals? How about a Rolex concentric dial and, for good measure, a domed bezel and a roulette date? And that's correct. This is a roulette date model, as it features the odds in red, let me get it into the setting mode. And then the evens in black. So you can see the namesake, roulette. It's that simple. Rolling seven, lucky seven. And this watch at 36 millimeters is pretty much my lucky size. The 36 looks great on my wrist. And I have to say that all things considered, if I were to buy a Datejust, I'd probably avoid the Datejust 41s and Datejust 2s and go straight for something like this. The domed bezel gives it a little bit of a neo bubble back appearance. And I happen to like the domed profile a little bit better than the traditional conical or even the fluted precious metal bezel. The two-tone, as they call it, Rolasaur, the combination of Rolex Ever Rose and nine 4L anti-corrosive, that is highly anti-corrosive stainless steel. Uh, a look that is somewhat distinctive of Rolex as the original Rolosaur combinations date back to the 1930s. Is it an alloy? No, even though it sounds like it. But it is a distinctive look, and when you think two-tone watches, Datejusts come straight to mind. That's a really sharp modern take on two-tone with the red gold rather than the yellow. Now, both of those watches that you just saw, powered by 3130 series movements, so automatic COSC, 48 hours of power reserve. That said, some folks want a little bit more reserve demosh. They want a bit more endurance, a watch with longer legs, and that is something Panerai has been providing since the 1950s. This is the 
Panerai Luminor, a PAM561. So this is a traditional 44mm Betterini or tuna can case. This is the case profile that debuted with the first civilian Panerai watches back in 1993. So this PAM561 is stainless steel, 41 mil, or I should say 44mm, and you can see it's actually one of the more I would say svelte Panerai options as it's under 14 millimeters thick. Now you also note that it is the Basse dial with quarter Arabics. You have dots of loom outboard and a lovely white lacquer, blackened hands at center for high contrast. And then you feature a Panerai manufacturer caliber. The P5000 has an eight day power reserve. It's also built with a sports watch style architecture. So you have a free sprung balance with a full bridge for shock resistance like a Rolex. And then you have this satin finished three quarter style bridge designed to evoke the Angelus SF240 pocket watch movements used in the first five-day Panerai watches of the 1950s. You'll also note that despite the display case back, this particular Luminor features 300 meter water resistance. It's usually a hundred with the display case back. You still get the distinctive device protecting the crown. You unlock the crown as such. Now I can wind and set the watch and you relock the crown as such. It also gives you all aspect protection so you can't accidentally slam the crown. A lot more protection than a convention shouldered crown guard. Throw it on the wrist. It's an impressive presence. Again, this is one of the thinner Panerai options you're going to find. At just over 13 and a half millimeters thick, it's really closer to Rolex than to Hublot, meaning if you can wear, for example, a Submariner or a Sky Dweller with a cuff, you're going to be able to wear this. The case is all of high polish, and for some folks, that is the only Panerai they'll choose. For others, they will not consider a high polished Panerai. Whichever side of the fence you fall on, the simple no-date two-hand dial has an element mental and timeless appeal to it. A great looking watch, one for the Paneristi purists. Okay, now there are watches that go one step above the likes of Rolex and Panerai. We're not interested in those. We're going two or three steps above and we're going straight for Patek Philippe. That's right. Rolex may be the giant of Geneva, but in terms of high horology, there is only one name in town. This is the 2013 modification of the Patek Philippe 5270G. This is the 5270G-014. This was the first generation with the so-called chin, whereby there is a sort of interference between the newly added tachymeter scale outboard, the seconds track and then the radial date down at six o'clock. Again, like a white dial Panerai and a polished case Panerai, the chin is ve very polarizing. It's not for everyone. Some folks like the addition of more articulation and definition on the dial compared to the original 2011 model of the watch. Other folks prefer the no tack dial of the original or the subsequent 2015 redesign. But I can tell you this, for 2013 and 2014, you're looking at all of two model years for this lovely and lush blue dial white gold perpetual calendar chronograph. 41 millimeters, the watch features Patek's own lateral clutch column wheel chronograph caliber. Now this is the CH29535 PSQ, so petite second, and it is a contient perpetuel. Take a look at the column wheel. It is black polished and capped. I'm even gonna grab my polishing cloth and remove any vestigial fingerprints that you might see there. Now you could see the black polish of the cap is exceptional Geneva style. Both the screw and the cap itself. You'll also note that there is a ratchet and paw based minute jumping system on the minute jumper bridge. At center, you could see that the lateral clutch, which is double jeweled, fully jeweled, comes in contact with the chronograph center wheel, and then there is a Baroque series of stainless steel satin finished levers and horns for the chronograph mechanism as well as the clutch itself. Now we're approaching the jump of the minute so you're going to see that in action, but you've got a six position adjusted balance beaten away at 28.8. It does, here it comes, there it is. Beaten away at 28.8, it does have a 65 hour manual wind power reserve and a Breguet overcoil handmade. You can see just how much of this movement is black polished as I turn it through the light. You can also see the glint and the gleam on the edge of every bridge as well as every lever. That is the mirrored anglage laid down by hand on a Patek Philippe of this price point. All of the screw heads black polished, a lovely coat to Genève across the bridges. And remember, I said this is a modern in-house Patek caliber, so you do have hacking sex. An easy watch to wear at 41 millimeters and just over 49 millimeters lug to lug. It's a full figured modern Patek, but it is not an oversized watch. The chronograph pusher feel is exemplary, as is the winding detent spring. You can really feel the detent clicking as you wind this watch. It's a tactile pleasure in every regard. Let's zoom out a little bit, see the watch in scale on my wrist. 
And for those of you who want a bigger watch, but not a huge watch, this is a perfect choice. I could wear this with absolute satisfaction that it's the perfect size between the truly large and the more traditionally petite men's dress complications of the 20th century. That said, some folks are going to be looking back on the 20th century with nostalgia, and in the year 2000, Patek bid adieu to the first century of Stern family ownership. Of course, the Sterns took over in 1932, and they control the company to this day. To celebrate the turn of the millennium as well as the century, we got this, the Patek Philippe. 5100, this is the J model, built in 1500 pieces, also known as the Manta Ray. I believe this was based on the, uh, I want to say the 2554 historic model, and an incredibly handsome watch that's only 45 millimeters lug to lug, 33 millimeters wide, and a comparatively svelte 11.8 thick. And I say comparatively svelte because you're looking at a 10 day power reserve with a power reserve complication. Now turn the watch over, and you can see that the movement, which was built expressly for this model is next level. So take a look at the bridges, Geneva style, with a traditional center wheel like a pocket watch, and then finger bridges leading to a free sprung gyromax style balance. You have Cote de Genève perfectly laid down. You can see them ridged on the top of the bridges. You have Geneva hallmark finish. Note that the movement is both sized and shaped for the case. Two mainspring barrels, and you can see the jewels, the pivot jewels, set in golden chiton. All of the pivot jewels for the train, by the way, set in golden chiton. Adjusted to five positions like a chronometer, and running for 10 days, it is a COSC certified chronometer, in addition to being Geneva Hallmark, a rare double certification watch, and Patek no longer certifies chronometers, so this is an extinct breed. A lovely watch on the wrist, you can see. It is truly engrossing, fetching, and elaborate, with a cambered sapphire that perfectly matches both the shape and the contour of the non-round dial. You can see it matches the arc of the watch and across the wrist plenty of clearance on both sides. If you've got a smaller wrist or a taste for traditionally sized watches, this is a great option. It's also a very viable unisex option and there's something about a traditionally sized Patek Philippe complication dress watch that just allows it to get away with yellow gold in a fashion that most other watches never could in the modern era. I talk about high standards, and Maitre du Temps has them. Although they are never collaborations between the same watchmakers, chapters 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3, which I have right here, are a sort of anthology collection of the best independents in the business. And this is the chapter 3 launched in 2011. You're actually looking at a piece unique modification with the Andy Warhol currency repainted by miniature painting master Andre Martinez of Switzerland. The timepiece is 42 millimeters in white gold and you can see right on the trigger that decouples the second time zone you have a only one signature. It is truly a handmade piece unique. 42 millimeters, the signature of this watch isn't so much the craft art, it is the hidden second time zone that uses a roller drum mechanism. So as I adjust the watch, you can see that the roller drum system, whether I turn it forward or backwards, is designed to jump down at six o'clock, two barrels, each with 12 hours, and you can see how they jump at the turn of the 12 hour phase. There is also an AM PM hand painted lacquered roller up at the top that will show you whether you're looking at, for example, daytime 12 hours or nighttime 12 hours. And you can see the tradition of hand painting here rendered in modern pop art style and in miniature fashion on both the dial as well as the barrels. Now shut it all down and not only do the shutters cover the barrels, but they draw flush with the dial itself. Turn it all over and you can see the SH-03 movement designed by Carrie Voudelainen and Andreas Streller. Those were the two masters, Voudelainen specifying the level of finishing as well as the general layout of the movement and the watch, and Andreas Streller prototyping the tooling as well as creating the hidden complication itself. So it's a collaboration between Streller and Voudelainen and in white gold, remarkably substantial on the wrist. 49 millimeters lug to lug and about 14 millimeters thick. It's a reasonably sized modern men's dress complication and you can really see the hand painted contours of that dial in exceptional lacquered fashion with the quartered currency symbols. A lovely and lively ode to 20th century pop art 
as well as 21st century craft horology, a truly special watch. And you can see that the dial has been pared down compared to a standard Chapter 3, which would have a moon phase and a date. Here, no such thing to preserve the purity of the dial and the lines of the painting. All right, for some yeah. folks, Dress watches are just not the thing, and that's fine, because in 2018, Audemars Piguet had one hell of a year in the Royal Oak collection. Of course, if AP has a good year, it means the Royal Oaks and the Offshores shined, and no offshore shined quite as brightly in 2018 as this remarkably big and blue chronograph. 42 millimeters stainless steel, you can see ceramic shoulder for the crown and ceramic chronograph pushers. Now, the blue here is gloss and lacquered on the dial, and then there's a lovely matching tone for the hand-cut strap itself. So, what is this blue? What is the, is there a Pantone, a hexadecimal? Is there a common term for this blue? I call it Nogaro blue after the Nogaro track that lends its name to the Audi RS series of Nogaro blue supercars. RS, which is now Audi Sport, it used to be Quattro, now it's Audi Sport, uses that signature purple blue, Nogaro blue, on all of its leading models, at least for the launch and the prototypes, as well as concept cars. But for folks who love Audi, look at that dial and think first generation RS2, and you know exactly where I'm coming from. This watch is that color, somewhere between purple and blue, it's Nogaro. Now you can also appreciate the fact that the dial is simple, easy to read, and high contrast, as there's no difficulty reading the contrast of the applique white gold numerals or the white gold hands against the base. Of course, Handsomely executed, you can see that they sweat the details with the bevel of the case continuing onto the beveled flank of the strap itself. Turn it all over and you've got AP base caliber 3126, 50 to 55 hour power reserve, full balance bridge and free sprung for shock resistance. You can see you've got a 22 karat gold winding mask that features the coats of arms of the Audemars and Piguet family to remind you that Audemars Piguet is the oldest Swiss manufacturer still under the control and the guidance of founding families. That said, if you want a big blue sports watch and you don't quite have AP money, Breguet might be just the answer. The Type 20, this one is the Type 20 Transatlantique. So what you're looking at is a 39 millimeter precious metal flyback chronograph with a date and a lovely gloss lacquered blue dial. Now you can note in big eye fashion, true to history, you have a larger register for chronograph minutes. Robustly loomed, you can also see there are applique indices outboard of the Arabic numeral hours and you have a bi-directional rotating pilot style bezel so you can actually line up with the baton style minute hand and concurrently time two events, one with the chronograph and one with the bezel. 100 meters water resistant. You can see the case back solid, water resistant down to 100 meters, and inside Breguet caliber 582Q. It is a flyback chronograph based on the Lemania 1350, so one of the greatest all-time automatic chronograph calibers in one of the greatest all-time chronograph watches. It's a match made in horological heaven, and when you throw it on the wrist, you realize that at under 46 millimeters lug to lug, this 39 millimeter watch is a perfect fit on wrists that might not accommodate the AP. So even if you're not looking for a different price point, you might be looking for a different size, but the same general spirit and functionality and you get that with the Breguet. Full platinum deployment class, by the way, a truly deluxe take on Breguet's historic Type 20 Aviators chronograph. Jumping back to Firenze and the world of Officine Panerai, we have a lovely Panerai 422 that is best described as the perfect luminor. I happen to like the marina dials with small seconds. For me, a watch is still a time-telling instrument, not just an expression of individuality and not just an article of fashion. So I like to have that constant second subdial. You can see here rose gold hands at center, a true sandwich dial with a stencil over a solid a disc of loom. That's why the wells for the numerals and the indices have such depth. It is the sandwich construction. It creates a wonderful three-dimensional luminescent effect at night. And with the rose gold hands and the ecru colored loom, it is a truly warm and approachable image. Now it's the Luminor 1950 case, as you can see with the more complex contours. Let's show the difference between the Betterini case here and the 1950 case. You could see to good effect that the 1950 isn't necessarily a larger case. It's just a more complex and nuanced 
nuanced contour that is actually truer to the historic Panerai reference 6152 that informs all Luminor models. Now, you still have the device protecting the crown, the locking lever, and you can see it still features a runner cam bearing internally, but what you have here is a little bit more deluxe finish than on the Betterini can we saw earlier. So turn the watch over and you can see you also get a more deluxe movement in caliber P3001. Three-day power reserve, you've still got the free sprung balance and the full balance bridge, and you can see there is a case back rose gold hidden power reserve indicator to preserve the purity of the dial in a fashion reminiscent of nothing so much as the Patek Manta Ray. You can see Officine Panerai has opted for a finger style bridge to link the escapement and the balance to the mainspring barrels of the watch. So that is an unexpectedly poetic reference to vintage watchmaking, but on some levels it makes sense because historically Panerai always used pocket watch movements and that is a common layout for pocket watch calibers. The watch is 100 meters water resistant. It is beautiful. It is current model year and you can see with that lovely minimally tanned assolutamente strap. It is basically a piece of raw leather with just coloration. It is a dramatic presence on the wrist. It's a big watch. Stainless steel and 47 millimeters. It's 57 millimeters lug to lug, so this is no shrinking violet. If you want a watch that is expressive, that is legible, that is functional first and, well, discreet never, that would be this. This is a really true-to-life Panerai tribute to its history, the 1950s, when this style was the Panerai watch to buy if you were an Italian frogman, if you were Italian Navy or Allied forces. This is a watch that perhaps is a bit more representative of their history while very much being a luxury product of the current era. So I'm not saying that I'm slating the Betterini tuna can. I'm just saying this is the look of the 90s. That is a little bit more the look of the 1950s. That said, let's turn the clock back even further. This is a Radiumair 1940. This is the PAM 995. This was actually a mid-year 2019 release. 45 millimeters in stainless steel. This was part of Panerai's second mid-year series of olive green dials. They had their first mid-year releases back in 2017. It has the same sandwich structure and you can see as with the 422 you have a dramatically domed sapphire and it is sapphire but it's designed to create the look of a traditional Panerai military era plexiglass and that it does quite effectively. What you get here is a very different movement architecture. Still 100 meters water resistant but caliber P4000 uses a tungsten micro rotor still giving you that free sprung full bridge balance so shock resistant still giving you that three day power reserve but it's achieved with stacked barrels. The micro rotor allowing this to be a relatively thin Panerai watch and you get the automatic winding convenience but you get the big open display case back that you would get on a manual wind because you don't have a center rotor the movement is entirely accessible to the eye and it is a good looking movement so for me the Panerai to own among these three is this one because of the size because it is thinner because of the green dial which I just love in conjunction with those rose accents and of course it's a bit more wearable on my wrist at 52 millimeters lug to lug and 14 millimeters thick this 45 is probably the pick of the litter for me from amongst today's Panerai lot and we rarely have three Panerai watches on the show so guys I realize it's been an underrepresented brand I've heard you I've responded that said the perennial favorite on this show week in week out Wednesdays and Sundays is always a Langa Unzona and for Langa it's always best to peg the meter with some sort of a complication. This is the Longa One Time Zone, a watch that originally came out back in 2005. This one in white gold is a lovely 41.9 millimeters. It uses the old Grand Longa case, which is almost 42 millimeters and one millimeter larger than the current Grand Longa. You have a dial made of solid sterling silver, a case made of white gold, and then you have a time zone adjustment system. The index is right down at approximately five o'clock and you can see that's where the index is there is a day night indicator for both dials that is uncommon on travel time watches the watch does all the math once you've set your reference city you can adjust and change your reference city and the watch will independently move that time zone now there is a way to decouple that time zone from this time zone so you can set them independently of course you have the signature long double digit date and i'm going to make sure i get this watch out of the danger zone before i use that adjustment mechanism. 
but you could see there is both a stepper for the date, which has a wonderful tactile feel, and a separate stepper for the current city of reference. Throw it on the wrist, all in white gold. It does have an impressive presence. It is one of the larger Longa watches, past or present, though it's not exceptionally thick. You can see it is easy to cuff if you've got a tight dress sleeve, and the case back is simply poetry. Poetry in slow motion. Beaten away at 21.6, this is a twin barrel, 72 hour power reserve, and you can see the exceptional freehand engraved secondary bridge for the time zone system, as well as lovely pocket watch inspired spiral spoke wheels. That is an exceptional image. Black polished swan's neck fine adjustment. Black polished cap to the bridge for the escape wheel. German silver golden nickel copper zinc bridges and plates. Fire annealed blued screws. Jewel set in chaton. And you could see just how richly textured those glossuta stripes are. If I can find the right angle, you can also see the glint and the gleam of these bridges, how broad and fat the anglage is. This is a shimmering sensation atop your skin. And we're not done with Langa, as I have a watch that came out in 2001, this one in platinum. This is the Saxomat powered Saxonia Perpetual. 38.5 millimeters platinum with a solid sterling silver dial and a solid gold moon disc. It actually features a zero reset second system, so not just hacking, it resets directly to zero so you can more easily synchronize the watch against a reference time. Take note, this watch features loomed hands and the convenience of automatic winding. You get that same German silver bridge architecture, but you get a double precious metal rotor on the Saxomat caliber 922 here. So you get a 21 carat engraved rotor and then you get a mass in platinum held together by blued screws. You can see the same degree of finish and you even have a better view of the engine turning on the base plate, large and medium, two different sizes. A special watch and one that measures about 47 millimeters lug to lug. It's an easy one to wear and you can really see on my wrist, this is a wonderful choice if you want to wear an absolute haute de gamme watch, but you don't wear something that's large and you don't want to wear something that's extravagant that's going to draw undue attention. Well, the Longa watch is the right brand for that kind of taste. White metal is the right color and of course the size 38.5 is universal. Fly and under the cuff and under the radar. Jumping back real quick to the giant of Geneva, I saw this watch bow alongside the current generation Explorer dial. So I mentioned the 214270 got a new dial for 2016. At that same Basel world, I witnessed the birth of a sensation, a watch essentially unchanged since it bowed in 2000. The real alteration was the addition of a ceramic bezel, and my goodness, did that revitalize the Daytona market. These now sell at twice their retail price of $12,400. Still 40 millimeters, this is the model that I like because the black lacquer of the dial seems to continue unbroken into the black ceramic with platinum fill of the bezel. So you get the scratch resistance of the ceramic and you get that continuous disc of black that causes the watch to read visually more like a 42 or a 43, even as it wears as a true 40. Now it has that deluxe clasp that I talked about, the double lock with the lift lock system and the clamshell. And you can see on the wrist, the Daytona cuts as imposing a presence as ever. It just has a little bit more of a malevolent menace with the all black look of the black dial model. So this would be my choice. Three day power reserve, manufacturer caliber 4130, vertical clutch, column wheel, COSC chronometer, a very impressive standard of the industry. It also has wonderful pusher feel, though we never talk about that. The Rolex Daytona with the in-house caliber has better pusher feel than the previous El Primero, and I consider this to be one of the best feeling column wheel chronographs in the business. Right up there with Zenith's El Primero, surprisingly the Breitling B01 and Longus Datagraph with its caliber L951. This Rolex is the standard of the industry, and I dare say the standard of the world in that regard. And if you're more inclined to frolic in the surf at Daytona Beach rather than dwell trackside in the wee hours of the 24-hour event, well, that's a 100-meter watch with screw downs, so you're good to go. That said, for some, 100-meter water resistance and a full bracelet may be a requirement, but they don't have the time or the money to wait for Rolex, and I have the answer to you. That answer is the 2019 Cartier Santos. Now, this is the Santos large case, 9.5 millimeters thick, 37.5 millimeters from side to side, and lug to lug, 47. Point Five millimeters, so very wearable. You can even see the camber of the case that curves around your wrist. It wears more compact than you might think. The Santos was all new for 2018, but it wasn't complete. 
what felt like a sports watch with automatic winding, 100 meters water resistant, and a soft anti-magnetic inner iron cage like a Milgauss, nevertheless did not include a loomed dial. That is corrected for 2019, and what a dial. It is a gradient blue sunburst that fades from a bright electric blue at its center to almost black and navy at its outer faces. It's also a higher quality dial because it features all polished applique metal Roman numerals, and you can see that they are black polished. It is not the printed dial of last year. Finally, at center, broad sword hands fully loomed. This is a true 24-hour sports watch, and you'll even note Cartier went the extra step of including a dark blue color matching date disc, and it doesn't just match the dial, it matches the outer race of the dial. A perfect coordination with a polished bezel, a lovely look, and of course Cartier's brilliant quick switch and smart link system. So you have quick switch. This is the system you remember from the Cartier Roadster, easily allowing you to swap between the bracelet that comes with this watch and the strap that comes with this watch. You get both. But there is also the smart link system, which is remarkably smart. And what that does is it allows you to size the bracelet without tools. Let me see if I have enough nails. But you can see just by triggering the smart link system, there is a trigger underneath, there is a spring loaded system that ejects the pin, and then there's a retention system so you can't actually pull the pin out. But once you've withdrawn the pin sufficiently, you have the ability to break and size the bracelet without tools. Is that brilliant or what? Truly a smart link. And inside, Cartier Manufacturer Caliber MC 1847, 42-hour power reserve, and remember, stop seconds, quick set date, soft iron anti-magnetic cage, and 100 meters water resistant. That watch is the full package, and that's a watch that retails, retails new for under $7,000. Full deployant clasp, full bracelet, accessory strap, you get all that, and even better buy pre-owned. That said, I'm not sure there's any watch on a bracelet on this table than I'd rather that I'd rather own than this particular Date 840. Now the Date 840 was new for 2015, the successor to the 2008 to 2014 Date 82. The 40 is not just one millimeter smaller, it is better proportioned. It's also narrower across the wrist, under 48 millimeters lug to lug, because the new generation President bracelet features pivoted rather than rigid end links. It's also a bracelet that in all of its forms, gold and platinum, includes ceramic coated pins internally, so the pins can never be worn down inside the links. As a result, the bracelet can never, ever stretch. Now you have a lift lock system with the crown clasp. It is actually a beak and a hook internally, and you have a little pivoted crown clasp release trigger right here. So this is not a friction fit system. It is a trigger release clasp. And then finally, you get a dial that is all new. There were a couple of laser cut dials on the Date 840, but the one that intrigues me most is this olive green sunburst. If you wished that the olive green dial had made its way to the 36 and 41 millimeter date justs, I'm with you, but you found it on the Date 840, and what a Date 840. White gold applique, diamond polished, Roman numerals with a watchmaker's four. You can see that the 40 millimeter case has a narrower bezel that's a little bit better proportioned than in the past. And underneath the dial, a new movement, caliber 3255, now with a 70 hour rather than 48 hour power reserve. You throw this watch on the wrist and my goodness, does it have presence. As you can see, the 40 wears quite easily. It's not a big watch objectively. So if you've got a smaller wrist, you're gonna have no trouble. My wrist is 16 centimeters once more for those just joining us or those who might be new to the channel. And I'm wearing it easily with plenty of of clearance on both sides. You can see that this is an easy one to ship. Still 100 meters water resistant and it has the same fundamental movement architecture as what you'll find in a Sea Dweller or a Submariner, so it's still very shock resistant. Of course, Rolex guaranteeing every version of this watch from the factory to run minus two plus two seconds or better per 24 hours. These are a great pre-owned buy because they come from the factory with a five-year warranty, so 
in almost all instances, you're going to be protected, even if you're getting this watch with the pre-owned discount, which, by the way, I think is the way to get that kind of watch. That white gold Rolex is not yet part of the waitlist family of Rolex references. It may get there, but not yet. Now, I realize I didn't actually show you the Santos on the wrist, so I'm going to quickly show you the Cartier Santos on the wrist, and you can see that it's an easy watch to wear. It's broad, it's flat, it's beautiful. It's a medley of creases and curves, polished and satin elements, and the contrast between the polished and the satin creates a becoming profile that's a bit more refined than you'd expect in a fairly substantial stainless steel sports watch. You can also see it does have a crown guard profile and the look of the Lynx is perfect. It blends into the new for 2018 flowing bezel design. That's how you know you're looking at the 2018 and later you have that little bit of a waterfall at the top and bottom of the bezel. A good looking watch. You can see the curvature of the case really works to your advantage. If you do have a borderline wrist and I'd say you could probably wear this watch on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference. It's a really appealing watch. One of Cartier's best. And of course, the Santos, invented in 1904, 115 years young. That was the world's first pilot's watch designed for an aviator, Alberto Santos Dumont of Brazil, who flew dirigibles, blimps, well, semi-rigid airships, before he flew anything with a fixed wing. All right. Let's take a look at something different than anything we've discussed. Let's talk about Laurent Ferrier. I think these guys are somewhere between the world of Michael Dutomp and Patek Philippe. Laurent Ferrier, of course, a complications specialist at Patek Philippe for much of his career. In 2008, he struck out with his son Christian and investors to create a new company based on his experience and standards, based out of Geneva, but perhaps a little bit more bold, daring, and experimental than Patek Philippe itself. Now, this is the Galet Traveler, a watch that's substantial, just over 41 millimeters. This one's in white gold. You can see it has that lovely smoothed pebble, pebble in a stream profile of the Galet case. But then you have a dial that is hand painted. This is the night blue dial. And you can see there's a lovely glow emanating from the continents. And the lighter portions of the continents are actually designed to emulate the glow as seen from space of the more highly developed and urbanized portions of the continents themselves. There's a lovely gradient from the continents to the middle of the ocean. And you can see at nine o'clock, there's a 24 hour format travel time display. You have hands that are adjusted using a pusher system on the flank. And take note, you can drive the date forward or backwards as you travel using that pusher system. White gold spear-shaped indices, assegai or spear-shaped white gold hands, turn it all over, Laurent Ferrier Micro Rotor 3-Day Automatic Caliber LF230. You've got a natural escapement, which is direct impulse, double direct impulse, nickel phosphorus balance system, so it's actually a nickel-phosphorus escape wheel tandem with a silicon blocker that allows those two nickel-based wheels to lock and unlock. Each one only impulses the balance in its direction of travel. It's based on the Breguet natural escapement system, and it allows this single barrel to power the watch for three days, but it also enables minimal parasitic losses and thus excellent chronometric performance. Six position, not chronometer style, five position adjustment, black polished cover for the balance, four interior angles inside the half bridge, and then a fifth at the center. You could see over the center wheel. That is exceptionally difficult to do. Both black polish, which you'll find on all screws, which you will find on the winding system, which you will find on the bridge for the balance, and which you will find on the bridge for the ratchet based 22 karat guilloche cut micro rotor automatic system. Throw it on the wrist and you can see this is a little bit bigger than your run of the mill Patek Philippe dress complication. It's a big watch. At almost 50 millimeters lug to lug, it does fill the wrist, but it's not unwieldy. And as you can see, it's nicely profiled with a dome like shape over the bezel and the dial. So you can fit this one underneath a wrist and it flies a little bit lower than something like a Patek Philippe 5130 or 5231. I, I think it's important to note that this watch does have a measure of discretion with a connoisseur brand, a white metal case, and a fairly dark dial. This is a watch that can give you an awful lot of functionality and, if you own a high power loop, an awful lot of case back pleasure. A truly special piece. So you have your choice between the two travel watches on the table. One from Alango Unzona, one from Laurent Ferrier, both immaculate in their finish, and you can see there are very different schools of thought, even though both of them are three-day power reserves. Which one do you prefer? It's hard for me to say. Although the Longa is probably the more appealing from an arm's length, I find that the detailing of the Laurent Ferrier, in particular the, the width of the Anglage 
and the black polish, the sheer amount of it and the quality, as well as the interior angles, slightly elevate the Laurent Ferrier over the Longa. The Longa is good, but in my opinion, Laurent Ferrier, whether the finishing is done in-house by suppliers, it's just a slight cut above a Longa Unzona, at least on these two references. I know that's going to be somewhat controversial. Let me know your opinion in the chat box, but you've heard mine. Now let's jump to a watch that represents perhaps the most undersung modern full bracelet stainless steel Patek sports watch of the modern era, the 5961A. Now this is the original 5961A. This bowed at Basel 2014 and it was discontinued by 2018, meaning it's a fairly scarce watch. It's also a very practical watch. At 40.5 millimeters in stainless steel, anyone can wear it, but look at everything you're getting. Automatic winding via caliber CH28520. 55 hour power reserve, automatic winding, vertical clutch column wheel chronograph. A chronograph? Oh no, not just. It's a flyback chronograph as well. It's also an annual calendar. The day, the date, the month in aperture display and easy to read. Now you're not just getting a chronograph. You could see there is a mono counter down at six o'clock that also gives you an AM PM indicator. The mono counter, which features both chronograph minutes and chronograph hours on a single scale, preserves the symmetry and the simplicity of the dial. This dial is also robustly loomed and you can see the hands as well as the white gold indices have been blackened for contrast against the white opaline, and it really is more white than silver, but the white opaline dial, there's a lovely flange outboard. You can see the Rayhot featuring calibration against which to read the minutes and the seconds, even fractions of seconds. Now, throw the watch on the wrist. You can see that the bracelet is almost like a vintage beads of rice. It vents the wrist incredibly well. It's incredibly comfortable. And I have to say, all things considered, I would take this over just about any stainless steel Nautilus or Aquanaut. It's low in profile. It's more of a connoisseur's Patek watch because just about everyone knows the 5711 now. It's almost becoming as obnoxious a self-conscious status statement as something like a Richard Mille RM 1103. Not this. This is a little bit less prominent in the collector community. A a collector who knows his stuff will know and appreciate this watch. A guy who's just looking for the wristborne card check, he doesn't get it. And you know what? I don't care. This is a lovely all-around Patek Sportster, and it truly does have handsome finishing, though not as micrometrically hand-finished as something like a Patek Philippe 5270 or 5970. It is very nicely executed, and you do get that for which you pay. The only limitation of this watch is the 30-meter water resistance. Again, that is the only limitation on this watch for all other occasions, formal or casual. This is your piece. That said, for some, none but the best, the most traditional, and the least compromised. Inherently, the best would be the least compromised, wouldn't it? But nothing but that kind of a watch will do. And for that person who brooks no limitations, compromise, or I might say off-brands, <laughs> Patek Philippe and the 5970P, a one-year reference made for 2009 only. It was unveiled in 2008, built for the 2009 model year, discontinued, with the first of the 5270s. Now this is a watch that was built over a relatively short period as a model, with the 5970 only really being made from 2004 to 2009 with the run out of the model run in 2010. This is a watch that was made for only one year and with 200 or less being made per year per metal. It's safe to say you're probably not gonna see another one of these. Now, because this is a modern platinum Patek Philippe, you have that brilliant cut top Vesselton diamond between the lugs, but you can also see that there's a nuance here that you might miss if you just see it online. There is a little bit of a concave profile to the lugs. The lugs are welded on. This is not a stamped or machined case. So this is a handmade case with the evidence of the solder between the lug and the case removed by hand. And then you have that subtle concave profile and the mirrored finish. You'll also note that there is a concave bezel to visually pair the mass of this 40 millimeter watch. And like I said, the man who brooks no sacrifice is going to want the most exclusive of one of the most appreciated modern Patek complications. Perpetual calendar chronograph and the goods, Lamagna caliber 
2310 here doing business as Patek Philippe CH2770. You can see Geneva Hallmark, no Patek Philippe seal, and a big slow beating balance. 18,000 vibrations per hour. You can see the balance is almost the radius of the entire movement. Manual wind, overcoil hairspring, and you will appreciate that it is also a column wheel lateral clutch. And you can really see the operation of the lateral clutch as it draws away from and into contact with the driving center wheel. The finish, as you can see, I'm moving it through the light. The glint and the gleam of the satin and the polished surfaces, the conventional and the poly noir or black polish, really setting apart not just the surfaces, but also the finish of the surfaces and the depth of this movement. The manual wind feel is exceptional. The column wheel pusher tactile sense is truly legendary stuff come to life in your hand. Throw it on the wrist, it is a little bit more compact than the 5270. This is a 40 rather than a 41, and you can see it's just over 47 millimeters rather than 49 plus. A lovely, imposing, and one might even say fairly brutal take on the dress watch complication. This is Patek Philippe with brass knuckles, a watch that has the visceral punch to hold its own over any sports watch, any haute de gamme, and any oversized case. And guys, I cannot do any better than that. That is what I've got for today. Let me know in the comments, what was your favorite? And if you've got requests for watches that I have not yet featured on this program, let me know in the comments, because I want to feature those on this upcoming Sunday weekend watches feature. Thanks to you, thanks to my crew, time out, Tim out, and thank you for logging on.